Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. What you are going to see in the next 60 minutes is not meant to shock you or frighten you. It is meant to warn you. We have gathered breathtaking, heart-pounding video from police agencies, helicopter and highway cameras, news departments, and freelance journalists who captured this amazing footage as it happened. Much of what you're about to see has never been seen before. These agencies have sent us tape from all over the world for one reason only. They want to help save your life. Because if you learn nothing else tonight, you will learn how to watch for danger. You will learn where to look, how to look, and most importantly, what to look out for. This is the moment of impact. I'm Sheriff John Bennell. The scene of every accident tells a story. Some are simple miscalculations by people. Some are gross mechanical failures, but we can learn something from all of them. Tonight, we're gonna to show you the accidents as they actually happen. We'll show you the causes, the results, and what's already being done to keep you safe from the next one. Because being prepared and knowing what to do in a split second is the only way to survive the moment of impact. With millions of licensed drivers behind the wheel in America, most of us will be involved in an accident at some point in our lives. And more often than not, the accident could have been avoided. Knowing how to react is the only thing standing between you and disaster. Of all the things that can lead to automobile accidents, none is as powerful and as unforgiving as Mother Nature herself. Nature's most common hazard is rain. First, rainfall is always the most deceptive and destructive. In Livonia, Michigan, a car has lost control on the rain-soaked I-96 and is stranded on its side. The early rainfall is mixed oil and dirt, and arriving officers know the slippery spot is still very dangerous. One officer backs his cruiser off as a warning to other drivers. It's not enough. Before the officer could even put out a warning flare, the rainfall claims another casualty. Another of nature's pitfalls is fog. In Camden County, Georgia, an officer has arrived at the scene of two car accidents. The dense fog blankets the roadway, and the drivers were simply going too fast. The passengers have sustained only minor injuries, but the danger they are in is far from over. Get in front of my car and lay down. You're doing all right. There are people still trapped inside one of the automobiles, and the heavy fog makes their location a major liability, right in the path of oncoming vehicles. You wrote this one down, honey. The windows and doors are jammed shut. A call is made for additional help. The trooper works to free the passengers before any trouble strikes. But the foggy night has the upper hand. Okay, I can't get in the vehicle. This vehicle is Secondary Get me some people out here. We see this was yet another motorist driving too fast. The pickup truck sideswipes both cars, barely missing the stunned officer. That truck almost killed me. The simple truth is that if you cannot stop within the distance you can see, you're asking for an accident. Slow down and compensate your reaction time. It's the only way to give yourself an out. And remember, a dense fog can roll in and be gone within a matter of minutes. 
so don't hesitate to pull to the side of the road and wait out the storm. Most weather-related accidents can be prevented with simple precautions. But then there are those freak accidents, moments when all you can do is get out of the way. In Elyria, Ohio, an ice storm has hit Interstate 90. A minor accident has left a driver stranded on the inside shoulder of the freeway. Ohio State Trooper Kelvin Collins arrives on the scene, and everything appears to be under control. Traffic is slowed to a steady crawl as drivers negotiate the black ice that covers the freeway. As Trooper Collins surveys the accident scene, another car is thrown into an out-of-control skid. The spin-out shows just how unforgiving black ice can be. Even at slow speeds, a driver can completely lose control. Suddenly, a loaded tractor-trailer hits the same patch, catching Collins and the driver off guard. If we had got out of the way at the time, we would both probably been seriously injured or either killed. For Trooper Collins, the events of that night are still incredibly vivid. We're standing on a burn next to the car, and behind us was a guardrail. So we're kind of like a sandwich between the car and the guardrail. As we're uh, conversing, another vehicle in front of us kind of spun out. The sliding sedan catches Collins' attention. Then suddenly, he spots the 18-wheeler headed straight toward him. The semi, fully loaded, can weigh close to 80,000 pounds, and that was sliding directly for his vehicle. Without thinking, Trooper Collins grabs hold of the driver, pulling him to safety within inches of both their lives. There was a voice that I heard that said, go get him, bring him to safety, grab him. And that's, that's exactly what I wanted did. When Trooper Collins arrived at the scene that night, little did he know that he would save a life. There was not much the semi-driver could have done to avoid the inevitable collision which just reinforces the number one rule about driving in bad weather. If you don't need to be out in the snow and the rain, don't go out. Stay home. Stay home with the kids. Another major cause of traffic accidents is reckless driving, and that is people doing something that they know is wrong, they've seen is wrong, and they do it anyway. And a lot of times, it's simply to save a couple minutes off their commute. From running red lights to cutting through traffic, it's amazing what some drivers will do to get that one extra car length ahead of the next guy. Whether deliberate or careless, drivers who think that this kind of driving will get them to their destination faster couldn't be more wrong. In Santa Fe, New Mexico, this officer pulls over a vehicle for speeding. Cafe Life is an insurance policeman. The police cruiser's caution lights are on, warning drivers to be alert. But then disaster strikes. The driver of the pickup truck was not paying attention to the road ahead. When he suddenly spots the cruiser on his right, he overcompensates and swerves away from the traffic stop. The officer rushes to assist the accident victims. Fortunately, no one is hurt. Y'all okay? Is everybody okay? These people were lucky. There's a reason why police turn on their lights at a traffic stop and it's up to you, the driver, to give them a break. Slow down, be alert. Because when these officers are out doing their job, they're trusting you to do your job behind the wheel. But of all the hazards that lead to accidents, a criminal running from police is the most dangerous. Chances are, you'll never witness a police pursuit in person. This is a very dangerous situation here. Most people never give a second thought to the possibility of being caught in the middle of one. 
police car head on. But felons run from the police more often than you think. And when these guys get behind the wheel, they're an accident waiting to happen. During this high-speed pursuit in L.A., helicopters play a role in trying to prevent accidents, even while they're trying to stop the fugitive. He's doing well over 100 miles an hour in an SUV. In his flight for freedom, the suspect in this pickup truck has come close to hitting several cars. If he crashes going this fast, it's all over. And although a highway patrol unit stays close behind the fugitive, drivers up ahead may not even realize they're in danger until it's too late. That's it. It's over. It's all over. Before you find yourself caught in the crosshairs of a reckless outlaw, there are a few simple rules you ought to know. Keep an eye on the mirror. Know what's coming up behind you. Also, many counties have radio stations dedicated to giving up-to-the-minute advisories on road and traffic conditions. Always have your radio preset to these stations. But most important, no matter how tempting it may be to play the Good Samaritan, never take the law into your own hands. Auto accidents are a fact of life, and they happen when you least expect it. And when disaster strikes, it's a very bitter pill to swallow. But the truth is that we are only safe if we know how to be safe. And behind the wheel of an automobile, no matter how dire a situation you may find yourself in, knowledge is power. Power to prevent and survive the moment of impact. Coming up, on Moment of Impact, oh, crash. some of the worst crashes you've ever seen. From the racetrack to the highway, from two wheels to 18, on water or in the air, in just a matter of seconds, Everything can fall to pieces. A horrible collision on the far straightaway. Next. Auto designers love race cars because it gives them an outlet for testing the latest engine technology. But the most important innovations here are the car's life-saving safety features. The racetrack the proving ground for all things automotive, where the industry's top professionals push a car's power, performance, and safety to the limit. Out here, technological innovations are made in leaps and bounds. 20 years ago, the only safety device was a seatbelt that locked tight. Two decades later, we have airbags, crumple zones, anti-locking brakes, and seat belts that are spring-loaded. Many of these advancements were tried and tested first here on the supercars of the Speedway. Hagerstown, Maryland. Jack, the driver in the orange vehicle, is fighting to hold third place. As they come out of the second corner, driving bumper to bumper, Jack gives a terrifying demonstration of just how far safety innovations have come. A horrible collision on the far straightaway. He smashed into the wall on the back turn. Hitting the curb at triple digit speed, car number one bumps Jack Spender, nudging him out of control. Then another driver smashes him into a confetti of spare parts. Emergency personnel rush onto the track in a desperate attempt to rescue Jack from the wreck. As they peer through the mangled metal, they're amazed to see that he's still alive. But the car is so twisted, the only way to get him out is with power cutters. They quickly extricate him from the wreck. Incredibly, Jack has come through with only a broken femur. From the speedway to the highway, conditions may be different, but the risks are the same. 
According to government statistics, someone dies in a car crash in America every 12 minutes. The innovations made in automotive safety significantly improve your chances of survival, but only if you use them. The surest way to keep yourself alive is to wear a seatbelt, a major reason why Jack is still racing today. Seatbelts save lives. Let it be yours. A horrible collision on the far straightaway. He hit the wall on the back turn. Queensland, Australia, where a Formula 4 speedway race is in progress. One of the more prevalent safety concerns on the road today is the rollover crash. And race driver Ritter, in the blue car, is about to put his roll bar to the ultimate test. Ritter takes the first turn on the inside of the pack. As the group accelerates out of the third turn onto the straightaway, the car behind clips him. And it's total disaster. A shower of sparks comes from the roll bar as it's ground into dust. Without that bar, there's no way Ritter could walk away from such a devastating crash. Amazingly, Ritter is virtually unharmed and manages to crawl out of the pulverized wreck. It's a testament to the extraordinary advances in auto safety design. The buckling of the suspension and wheels looks spectacular, but that's actually what they're designed to do in a hard collision, absorbing impact energy, whereas the roll bar, made of tempered steel, can withstand the most brutal impact. As the car bounces, the wheel axis crumples, but the safety cell surrounding the driver stays intact. This controlled falling apart is an effective safety design. With the increasing popularity of large, top-heavy vehicles, rollover crashes are all too common. Some are equipped with roll bars, but most aren't. Roadsters without this feature are equally dangerous. The best thing you can do to avoid this kind of accident is to keep safe speeds on corners. And for off-road adventures, know the maximum grade your vehicle can handle. Most vehicles tend to be quite safe. But if yours gets flipped, you may not be as lucky as this driver. Kalgoorlie, Australia. Ray Bowman is about to attempt a world record jump. Ray has to clear 45 cars. With typical dry Australian humor, Ray's named his stock car, the Coffin. Ray slams the gas and hits the ramp at 125 miles per hour. Then, as soon as he leaves the ramp, it's apparent that the engine's too heavy. It drags the front down, and Ray gets flipped end over end in a spiral of destruction. A rescue team scrambles furiously to get Ray out of his mangled car wreck. Amazingly, he's still alive, and he even musters a smile. But he knows it could have been worse. Because Ray's car was designed for this kind of abuse, he was able to survive with only a broken leg. Accidents happen, even to the pros. The biggest mistake any driver can make is thinking it will never happen to them. Still to come, a moment of impact. Return of the driver's edge dropout. From botched hit and runs, and he got in the car and, you know, took off. To red light renegade. When there's no safe place to stand. Go, go, go. And no safe way to land. The accidents are so inevitable. Here, let's get off the side of the road out of the way of that traffic. Anyone can see them coming. Just like that, see? Most people feel safe going with the flow of traffic around them. But if you're not looking farther ahead, sudden stoppages in the road could take you by surprise. Los Angeles, California. 
an all too common sight on freeways across the country. A car sits disabled in the center lane. The vehicle stalled after hitting another car. Something hit my back bumper. I looked down there and I seen the car just spinning around and I pulled over to the side. So far, the driver of the small car has done everything right. He's made sure to turn on the car's hazard lights. He and his family are positioned safely off to the side. A tow truck has been called and CHP is en route. But a trucker doesn't see the stalled car until it's too late. A vehicle this size can't stop on a dime, and the 45,000-pound tractor trailer slams into the car's back end. Fortunately, the shattered car was the only casualty of the night. Another night on a different freeway. A similar car is in the same dangerous situation. Once again, the driver was smart enough to turn on his hazard lights and get out of harm's way. But once again, a speeding driver can't stop in time. The driver of the truck gets out to check on the other car. A natural reaction, but it could prove deadly. On a busy freeway like this, it only takes a second to turn a small accident into a pileup. The second driver was simply going too fast to stop. The driver of the pickup barely avoids being hit. Another team, another team. Other motorists escape disaster by mere inches. By the time police arrive, the damage is done. And it all happened in a matter of seconds. So how could it have been avoided? Motorists should exercise defensive driving at all times. Keep clear lanes in mind as escape routes, should the need arise. If your car is disabled, but you can pull to the shoulder, do so as quickly and cautiously as possible. If it won't move, use your hazard lights and clear the road when it's safe to do so. Following these simple rules could save your car and your life. Seguin, Texas. Trooper Christopher Heron pulls a motorist over for speeding. It's a routine traffic stop. But Heron knows that safety comes before business. Hey, let's get off the side of the road out of the way of that traffic there, so neither one of us get run over. While the officer runs the woman's license, her friends wait inside the car, and she wanders back to rest against her vehicle. But when Heron returns, he cautions her again. Let me get you come on over here, man. If you're up here and anybody hits the back of my patrol car, it's a good chance you're gonna get caught somewhere in between that car and your car. And if you're not caught in between, you may still get struck by one of the vehicles. I don't want that to happen to you. It's a prophetic warning. Just like that, see? Just like that. Both the woman and the officer are unharmed. He immediately radios for help while she goes to check on her passengers. I need EMS to my location. A vehicle that just struck the vehicle that was in front of me. Thankfully, there are no serious injuries. I'm kidding. No, don't move on, okay? This conscientious cop saved the woman's life and proved that timing is everything. If you're stopped on the roadside, always remain clear of traffic. Okay, let's get off the side of the road. And listen to the police. And if you're not caught in between, you may still get struck by one of the vehicles. Because there's a pretty good chance they know what they're talking about. Just like that, see? Accidents are just that. They're mistakes. They're doing something wrong. Leaving the scene of an accident isn't a mistake. It's intentional, and that is a crime. Los Angeles, California. A woman has been rear-ended at an intersection. An official takes a statement from a witness. I was standing over by my truck, and, you know, I hear some screeching. I look over and watch the impact. As the witness rushed to the woman's aid, the other driver fled the scene. The other driver that hit her, you know, I told him to turn on his flashers, and he got in the car and, you know, took off. But the hit-and-run hoodlum left a very big clue behind. 
his bumper, with the license plate still attached. Paramedics arrive on the scene. They tend to the woman, who has an aching case of whiplash. Suddenly, the unexpected happens just a few feet away. I was stopped for a red light, and a car came up behind me and hit me. It's the same driver from the first accident, coming back for his bumper. He panics when he sees fire officials already on the scene. So he abandons his recovery mission and speeds off again. He doesn't realize the cops are just now arriving. And this hit isn't going to be followed by nearly as much run. You hit the other car, you already had the paramedics here, fire department, and the police had just turned the corner. The suspect surrenders peacefully just a block away. We have one apprehension, one male. I'm very happy that they were here and that they were able to catch him before he did more damage. Ironically, the vehicle that sustained the most damage on this night of multiple collisions was the hit and run driver's own car. If you're in an accident, stay and exchange insurance information with any other drivers involved. Wait for police to arrive and for paramedics if necessary. And most importantly, don't flee the scene or you're only looking for more trouble. Just ahead, a moment of impact. They begin as friendly competitions and end as bitter battles for survival. In these races gone wrong, the only real prize is coming out alive. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Cycling is one of the most popular recreational sports in the world. But of all the vehicles on the road, none is more vulnerable than an accident, and no rider more exposed to injury. Launceston, Australia. At the Australian Track Championship, the cyclists enter the final seconds of the race. The crowd's excitement mounts as the pace heats up for the closing laps. The riders are completely focused on mustering their last burst of energy. Then suddenly, mayhem. As they come out of the turn, the third rider is nudged. She loses her balance and slams into the track. Unable to stop, the others plow into her and then into each other in a disastrous wave of crashes, wiping out half of the competitors. Medical personnel rush to the cyclist's aid. Even nearby referees have been injured. For a few moments, it's total confusion. There are too many wounded and not enough emergency crew. Even on the smooth track of the velodrome, legs have been scraped and scarred. Despite wearing helmets, heads have been battered and bruised. Hands have been grazed through gloves. And there are a few broken bones. Even with the finest safety equipment, Bicyclists face extreme hazards like this because they're so vulnerable. And out on the open road, those dangers are compounded. At the Commonwealth Bank Cycle Classic, riders don't have the wooden surface of the indoor track or medical personnel constantly at hand. Flying into the home stretch, cyclists battle for fourth place. As they speed into one of the last turns, a rider skids causing a horrendous pileup. Three riders and a spectator are rushed to the hospital. One is given stitches, and the others are treated for severe grazes. All it took was a minor slip to inflict four people with a burning case of road rash. With bare skin scraping hard concrete, the pain was excruciating. A cyclist exposure makes him prone to serious harm, even from the slightest accident. There are numerous products for a rider's protection, like riding pants, gloves, helmets, and portable first aid kits. Whether you ride for sport or recreation, you should take all the precautions available. 
because a few simple safety measures can mean the difference between a harmless tumble and a serious crash. Eugene, Oregon. A speedboat race is about to take a disastrous turn. A boat hits the wake of its competitor going 165 miles an hour. It pinwheels over the white cap before thrashing hard onto the water's surface. Miraculously, the driver has survived the impact, but he's trapped underwater, unconscious. Now he faces a new threat, drowning. Rescue crews race to the scene. They pull the man from the water and resuscitate him. Amazingly, he suffers only minor injuries. But it just goes to show, with the added dangers of submersion, surviving the impact of a water crash is only part of the game. Baltimore, Maryland. A tight race finds two contestants pushing each other to the limits of their vessel's power. As they reach a turn, one of them loses control and rams the other. Oh, the aftermath of the crash leaves one boat capsized and both crews in jeopardy. The two men aboard the first vessel emerge unharmed, but the other boat is sinking. Its two passengers were kept alive by their safety harnesses, but now they're trapped inside. A rescue helicopter hurries to the scene, but it will be a challenge to reach the endangered crew. Luckily, the men have another safety device to aid them. Emergency oxygen tanks fitted beneath their seats. Moments later, they surface. Their air supply kept them alive until they were able to free themselves from the wreckage. Speedboats can travel at double the rate of a standard car. But unlike the smooth concrete of an automobile racetrack, water is full of unseen ripples and currents. So piloting a water vessel at top speed is a risky proposition. Whenever you're on water, always wear a life vest. Because whatever kind of boat you're in, if you can't stay afloat, you can't stay alive. Coming up, on Moment of Impact, what goes up comes crashing down from fierce World War II fighters to high-tech modern airliners. The fight against gravity becomes a fight to stay alive. Plus, drivers who treat the right-of-way as if they're right and you're in the way. Air travel remains today the safest form of transportation available. But when you're 30,000 feet in the air traveling at 500 miles an hour, any problem is a major problem. Oshkosh, Wisconsin. The air show offers visitors plenty of thrill, but nobody expected anything like what they're about to see. A World War II Corsair was trying to take off, but it clipped the wing of another aircraft. The classic plane twists into a horrible fireball. Another plane narrowly skirts the same disaster. This is the fear of air travelers everywhere. Devastating crashes caused by even minor mishaps. The pilot was lucky to escape this inferno with his life. Half a world away in Shanghai, China, it takes millions of dollars and extraordinary knowledge to build a modern jetliner. But all that effort couldn't prevent the failure of the front landing gear on this MD-11. The pilot has only a few minutes to muster his extensive training, hopefully preventing a tragedy. Precise controls allow the pilot to guide the plane toward the runway. But the touchdown will be a harrowing ride. Despite the weight and punishment, the underside holds steady, leaving the engines high enough to avoid an explosion. The bottom grinds away in a shower of sparks, but eventually the plane skids to a halt. 
Inflatable slides provide instant escape for all the passengers as firemen douse the hull with chemical flame retardant. Despite the terrifying prospects of this landing, everyone comes out alive. Pilots around the world know they can't eliminate accidents, but sometimes skill and knowledge can rescue a horrible situation. And the more we learn, the more the odds keep improving in our favor. Besides airplanes, no other mode of air transportation has been more revolutionary and useful than helicopters. But without wings to glide on, a distressed helicopter can plummet from the sky like a stone. This chopper is part of a US peacekeeping force in Bosnia. But even on a routine patrol like this one, the danger factor is always present. Just as the helicopter tries to alter its course, the rear rotor violently breaks off. The pilot struggles to bring the aircraft down gently, but all he can do is brace for impact. For reasons unknown, the back propeller disintegrates into tiny pieces. The loss of this crucial piece of equipment renders the chopper utterly useless. Luckily for the pilot, the aircraft landed on the mountain. It fell only a few yards and several trees broke the fall, saving the lives of those on board. At an air show in New Townards, Northern Ireland, spectators thrilled to the acrobatics of 70-year-old stuntman Ken Wallace and his homemade gyroplane. It's a smaller version of a helicopter and subject to the same dangers. Before he can even start his performance, the rear rotor stalls. With only a helmet to protect himself from impact, the speeding propellers whiz past his head. The blades barely miss the disoriented pilot. The concerned spectator sprints to the accident scene. Unbelievably, Wallace is not only all right, he stands and waves to the crowd in a display of pure showmanship. From homemade to civilian to military helicopters, it only takes a moment for these miracles of modern engineering to falter. And when something goes wrong with standard operating procedure, sometimes the only thing a pilot can do is land in the safest place possible. The more we study plane crashes, the more we learn about how to prepare for them. And knowledge is power, because even the most hopeless situation can be salvaged by a skilled hand. There may be no moment of impact as feared as an airplane crash. Plummeting from miles above the earth, passengers suddenly find themselves helpless. Their lives entirely in the hands of a few professionals, whose job is to get them safely to their destination. Pilots face down danger every time they take to the sky. And in the case of equipment failure, a quick-thinking crew can outwit disaster and find a way to save lives. Sioux City, Iowa. A mechanical problem has wiped out this airplane's steering and control systems, leaving pilots Al Haynes and Bill Records with no way to safely land. And we began to experiment and find out that, that we could not fly it under conventional means. And the only way we could fly the airplane was by using the two throttles. But what we had was, would be like trying to bring a car down Pikes Peak with no steering and try to make it do what you want to do by opening the door on one side and opening the door on the other side to, to force it to turn. The impact is terrifying. The only recollection I have of that entire incident is a sound. Whoosh. With no brakes, the aircraft hits the pavement at full speed. The wing barely catches on the ground, causing the plane to skid off the runway and explode in flames. In mere moments, all that remains of the fuselage is a smoldering fragment. Rescuers race to the scene. As fire crews douse the flames, 
workers comb the adjacent fields for survivors. Amazingly, amid all the destruction, there are signs of light. We were literally just jumbled into the debris, in which order I don't know, other than the fact that I was definitely on the bottom, I was the last one to be removed. It's a remarkable example of the plane's safety mechanisms working to perfection. I can't say we knew the outcome was going to be good. Uh, I, there was hope up until the last minute. Our passengers were thrown out in the cornfields and out and walked out in the cornfields, and our flight attendants gathered them in groups and put them in groups so that when the rescuers did come, they would all be together. The shaken families of the injured arrive in Sioux City, relieved that their loved ones have survived. Without functioning controls, the pilot's ability to reach the airfield at all is nothing short of miraculous. But the true miracle lies in the 184 people who owe their lives to the pilot's skill. In the wake of the accident, airline officials conducted a test of other pilots under similar conditions in a flight simulator. In all 58 trials, there were no survivors. When you fly on a plane, always pay attention to the safety instructions given by flight attendants. Identify your exit row and fasten your seat belt. To survive a crash, you need to utilize every safety mechanism the plane offers. I survived a crash that I don't believe I should have survived. The precautions exist to ensure that even in the most dire circumstances, people can and will survive. Somebody asked, you know, what would you change? And it came out that we wouldn't change one thing. I don't think we could. I don't know, I don't know what we could change that make it work any better. Coming up on Moment of Impact. The signs say stop, but the drivers say go. When these lead footers flaunt the law, oh boy, here we go. Go, oh, go. Oh, oh. They're not the only ones who pay the price. Every year, thousands of Americans push their luck at the one place they never should, intersections. Whether from sheer impatience or an arrogant sense that it will never happen to them, people who ignore traffic signals are the most indiscriminate hazards on the road. No matter what time of day or night, No matter how clear the streets may seem, oh, PA. intersections are never the place to just go for it. You may think it's worth it just this once. But how much time does this impatient driver actually save? Does this truck even make it to work? Yielding the right-of-way isn't just about aiding the flow of traffic. It's about saving your life. Never ignore a four-way stop. Never try to beat the red light. Never think you'll be the exception to the rule. Oh, boy, here we go. Oh, oh. 